everyone, this is Matt Two Show and Intro Stats, and today we're looking at a new topic, uh, experiments and experimental design. So we've been talking about collecting data and uh, in, this, in this unit, so now we're going to be talking about a special way of collecting data that is referred to as an experiment. So what makes an experiment? Um, so uh, let's get started. So um, we, let's start with the definition. So an experiment is a scientific method of collecting data, a special way of collecting data that controls confounding variables in order to prove cause and effect. So one of the key things with experiments is you want to sort of associate it with somebody needs to prove one thing causes another. That's usually the kind of the standard experiment of why somebody would do an experiment. Now the one thing about this is that a lot of times people don't um, necessarily use experimental design. You can just sort of collect data without trying to control confounding variables. So we're going to get into this controlling confounding variables, what does that mean, and this whole idea of cause and effect. So you're trying to show that one thing causes another. So usually we have special terms and stats. For example, uh, an explanatory variable is the thing that's doing the causing. So sometimes we do, they refer to that as the independent variable or the, the cause variable. Um, and then the response variable is the sometimes referred to as the dependent variable, the, um, sort of the how you are measuring the effect, right? So how are you measuring the effect? So um, the, the, we have the explanatory variable and the response variable, and that's sort of, those are sort of terms that you'll see in experiments. Now, so I think to explain this in an experiment, it's best to have context, to have an example. So um, I like to work through this with an example for you, okay? So let's suppose that one of the most common types of um, experiments that people do is medication experiments. We oftentimes have to, we always have to prove that a medicine works before we can release it to the public uh, for people to use. So we, how do you prove that a medicine actually works? Um, it's actually not enough just to look at data. Um, and that's what we're going to kind of look at. We need a special way of proving that um, the medicine actually does work. So let's take an example. Let's suppose that a company has a new blood pressure medicine. Um, remember, high blood pressure is very dangerous. You should always get your blood pressure checked. Um, but they're, they're, for many people, the only way they can keep their blood pressure under control is to, with some kind of medicine. So let's suppose we have a new blood pressure medicine on the market and we want to prove that it lowers blood pressure. So again, think of it this way. The explanatory variable is going to be what's doing the causing, right? So taking the blood, do you, are you taking this medicine or are you not taking this medicine? So taking the medicine or not would be the explanatory variable. And then what am I, what's the effect that I'm trying to measure? Well, I'm trying to measure, see their blood pressure. I want to make sure their blood pressure is going down. Um, so that's going to be the response variable, all right? Now here's the problem. Just because uh, you have some data showing uh, maybe the, the blood pressures of people that take medicine doesn't really prove that the medicine is the, is the factor that's actually lowering the blood pressure. So in other words, in stats, we often say things like, just because things are related or associated uh, sometimes you'll even hear people say correlation. That does not pr actually prove causation. So just because you have data, maybe this medicine was used other parts in the world for a while, and we see that in that data that, you know, that um, there's people that are taking the medicine and we have maybe their blood pressure, that actually does not prove that it's the blood pressure medicine that's actually causing their blood pressure to go down. Why? Why is just because things are are related, does that not prove causation? So in other words, if you just collect data, uh, we sometimes refer to that as an observational study. I think I'll write that down, observational study. So an observational study is collecting data without controlling confounding variables. OK? 
okay? Sometimes we, that's referred to as an observational study. So it's all about this something, what we call confounding variables. Experiments are really tied to confounding variables. So confounding variables are often referred to, also referred to as lurking variables, is other factors that influence the response other than the explanatory variable. So think of it this way. Is there, is there some other reason somebody's blood pressure could go, could fluctuate up or down besides the medicine? So is there something besides the explanatory variable that might be a factor in the response? This is why you can't say cause and effect. Just because two things are related, maybe we collected some observational study data and we see that we see people's uh, blood pressure and, their, and whether or not they're taking medicine, but I, I, there's other reasons why their blood pressure may go down. So it's not really proving that the medicine actually works. So in this case, can you think of confounding variables? Can you think of something that might influence a person's blood pressure other than their... Um, other than taking medicine, okay? So something besides taking medicine. So can you think of anything? Probably some of you, uh, somebody are saying, oh, maybe their age is a factor, right? Maybe their age is a factor, right? Okay. Anything else you can think of? Um, maybe uh, their diet, right? Maybe exercise could be a factor, right? I know some of you are thinking stress, right? Stress might be a factor, right? There's lots of things you can think of that might influence a person's blood pressure other than taking medicine. Genetics is one of the, probably the biggest one. I have to tell you something, guys. You have to pick your parents more carefully next time. I am not kidding. You gotta pick your parents very carefully. Because whatever they got, right, you got their genetics. You know, if they had high blood pressure, you might have a good chance you're going to have high blood pressure. Right? So uh, that's always a big factor, genetics. So there's lots of things that might influence the blood pressure. So here's the, here's the argument. How does, how does, um, how can I prove that it's the medicine that's lowering the blood pressure and not one of these things. Maybe the person is exercising more. Maybe they change their diet. Maybe their age or their stress or genetics. Maybe that's the reason why their blood pressure is high or low. So in other words, the key of an experiment is to what? Control confounding variables. Control confounding variables. I have to prove that it's none of these things. That's not the reason of why their blood pressure is going down. Their blood pressure is going down because they're taking the medicine. Hope that makes sense. So it's, it's really about controlling the confounding variables. All right, well, how do I do that, right? How do you control confounding variables? Well, the, the idea in the experiment is to create two similar groups. It, sometimes it's more than two groups, but the general simple model is to create two similar groups. One group we'll call the treatment group. Those are the people that get the medicine. And then we have the control group, so the comparison group. Right? We need to, how do I know if the people getting the medicine's blood pressure are high or low unless uh, we have something to compare to? So we call that the control group. Those are people that are not getting the medicine. Now the key with experimental design is these two groups should be very, very alike in all of my confounding variables. In other words, I should, each, both groups should have very similar ages, very similar diets, very similar exercise, uh, very similar stress, very similar genetics. Anything I can think of that might be a confounding variable to blood pressure needs to be the same in the two groups. Okay? So think of an experiment as collecting data in a very special way that creates these two groups that I can compare that are very similar. I always get to my students that says, oh, you can't do an experiment. You can't do an experiment. You can't experiment on people. 
And I always, I'm looking at him and I'm like, I think you really don't know what an experiment is. I think you've watched too many movies and you've seen mad scientists experimenting on people and that's what you associate in your head as an experiment. That's really not a scientific experiment. Experiments are all about just comparing two groups of people that tend to be very, very alike. That's the whole idea. Try to, try to compare two groups of people that are very, very alike. Okay? So, there is one more, if you're dealing with a medicine, there's actually one more confounding variable that we haven't really, that's not on my list over here. And it's called the placebo effect. The placebo effect. So the placebo effect is the capacity of the human brain to manifest physical responses based on a person believing something is true. So let me, let me think about this for a minute. So suppose you have a person, you're a person that has high blood pressure and we're giving you a really good medicine, right? One of the new medicines on the market, it's really good. Aren't you gonna feel a little less stressed out? Huh? Aren't you gonna feel a little more like, oh, okay, I'm getting a good medicine, my blood pressure is probably gonna be under control. In other words, just believing in your head that you're getting medicine might cause you to your stress to go down and maybe your blood pressure might decrease a little bit just on that if that that uh, alone uh, or what if you what if you're in the group that is not getting medicine right or isn't that group going to be like oh man I have high blood pressure and they're not giving me anything I'm getting much more stressed out about my blood pressure my blood pressure is going to start going up naturally and I haven't even talked about medicine it's just because I believe that I'm not getting medicine does that make sense so in other words, these groups inherently would be different because in the placebo effect. So in other words, the placebo effect now becomes a confounding variable. Okay, so I'm going to add that. The placebo effect is now become a confounding variable. So how do we combat the placebo effect? We do a placebo. Right? A placebo is a fake medicine or treatment. I mean, if you know that, right? You, now we're going we're gonna to actually, the people that are not getting medicine are going to actually get a fake medicine, a medicine that looks almost the same. Okay?